today I want to answer this question. And I get this question all the time. Do I say during the interview, what am I supposed to talk about if I don't talk about my book? Most of the time, you're not going to talk about your book. You're going to talk about the people who need your book or want your book. You are always in service to them, whoever they are, even when you write memoir, even when you write fiction. Let that sink in. It is your job to serve people as an author. No one wants to hear you talk about what's on page 87 other than me and maybe some of my friends. If you want to talk about that, drop me a line, allison at lanelit.com. Here's what people want to know. When I say people, the interviewer wants you to come prepared to offer them something that their audience needs, that their readership needs. You've got to know your job. Know your job. Your job is to contribute to that podcast host, to the interviewer, to the conference organizer. Know what the audience needs, wants, wants to avoid, wants more of, what's in their way, why it's a problem. And then the first question is so key. The first question that you get to answer is not actually verbalized. Interviews go like this. Hey, I'm so glad to talk to you. Welcome to the podcast. I'm so glad we're finally doing this. Welcome, Allison Lane. And if you say this, you are shooting yourself directly in the thigh. Great, Allison. So glad to be here. Followed by silence. Wah, wah. We don't want to watch you say, so glad to be here. So glad that we're finally talking about this. This what? I'm listening. And you know what I do? I skip through all that baloney. I skip through the, hi, how are you doing? It's been so long since we talked. Woof. I'm not interested in that. Get to the point. I'm listening because I want to know something for me that I can learn about, understand better, take action on. And that's what your audience or your interviewer's audience wants as well. So here's how you answer that question, which is really, please start talking. Welcome. I'm so glad we're here is really, please start talking about and address my audience with why you're here. And P.S. It's not to talk about your book. So here's how you can trans that in your head. Hi, Allison. I'm so glad we're finally doing this. Welcome to the podcast. And I would say, the old me would say to myself, thanks, Alice. Thanks for having me. No, please don't do that. Thanks for having me is not the answer. So glad to contribute to your article is not the answer because you're essentially slamming a door in that person's face and the listener and the reader then gets nothing, no value. You are putting words into the universe that don't matter. Don't do that. Nail your interview by saying, again, let's role play. I'll be the interviewer and the interviewee. Hi, Allison. Welcome to the podcast. Your response is absolutely not. So glad to be here. And then dead silence. Instead, your response should be, thanks. I'm so glad that we're getting to talk about why it's important that when you're an expert, you write the book you know you're meant to write. They finally get their book published and it languishes or it dies on the vine before people really get to know it. There's so much we can talk about. These tips are going to help people get their book into the world as bestsellers. There are three obstacles I know we're going to cover. I want to make sure that we do because your listeners need to know that while they are managing a thriving medical practice or teaching at the university, the time to write their book is now, not when they retire or take a sabbatical because nobody wants your insights or your expertise once you're not the reigning expert. So let's dive in. That's how you kick off. You know why you're there. You know who your audience is. Even if you're being interviewed by the Washington Post or the reporter 
is interested and has a point. They'll sometimes tell you, I'm writing out an article about the financial effects of COVID on city planning and road work. But you'll know it's not a surprise. They didn't ambush you. It's your job to know why you're there, what value you contribute to the podcast host and the reporter, and knowing that you are now their partner in serving their audience. So it is your job to understand what they need and to know that you are not being interviewed because you're you. You're being interviewed because you serve an audience. You are a spokesperson for the themes in your book, and you are an advocate for the people who need the insights and perspective in your book. Show up for every interview knowing that you're going to kick it off as soon as somebody says, glad we're finally doing this. Go ahead and start the conversation. So glad we're doing this because people need to know or too many people believe or it's so hard to figure out whatever it is. Define the problem, the desire, who it's for, and take control because that's your job. More times than not, the interviewer and the podcast host are going to turn to you and be like, oh, great. Thank, you know, they're thinking, thank heavens you help frame again what we're talking about because you're not at a party. They're not just chit chatting to you because they are so interested in your book. They are serving a purpose and you are now their partner. Now for the Buzzworthy book. Growing up in public, this is coming of age in a digital world. Listen, it's September. It's back to school. My kids are back in school, and already they're communicating once again more than over the summer with their friends, keeping up with things through social, through Snapchat, through whatever. Devorah Heitner is an expert at educating children and parents and teachers and all the other experts out there on how to have conversations with parents and teachers and PTAs. She speaks all year long. It's so good and such a fast read because it's filled with stories and real examples of all sorts so that you can have a conversation with your 13-year-old or your 16-year-old or your 7-year-old who thinks that they need a phone. P.S. They don't. That's a spoiler. The 7-year-old does not need a phone. This is such a, a great blurb from Rosalind Wiseman who wrote Queen Bees and Wannabes. That was a New York Times bestseller. Heitner translates teens' social and technological landscape for parents so they can help their children thrive. Her focus on character instead of the threat of consequences, is a rare antidote to the fear-based parenting that so many others have espoused. What a literary French kiss from Ro Rosalind growing up in public. Talk about a big smooch for growing up in public. Thank you, Rosalind Wiseman. Devore's work was once again quoted in national media, giving context to what conversations parents need to have and wit and giving them options. It's not one and done for all. It's situational. Your child and your relationship with them and their lives are unique every single time. And she's so careful and deliberate and thoughtful about giving you a path forward. So pick it up, growing up in public. Stop agonizing about kids going viral for the wrong reasons. Focus on helping them figure out who they really are. 